MMOs are one of the most community intensive games out there, allowing a player to join a guild, play with friends, and do a variety of content together. For me, I play Final Fantasy XIV with my fellow guild members, or FC members as it's called in-game, and one of the most popular content that I have seen us partake in would be raiding. And raiding is usually the hardest, most coordinated content in the game. Though rather intensive, it is also the most satisfying seeing players dance around the map while keeping damage uptime. Only problem is that not everyone wants to experience a several hundred hour story just to get to this kind of fun content, or some players may be afraid to get into the content just because of how many things they'll have to learn. Well, do I have a game for you that is beginner friendly to MMO rating and also takes on a whole different form. Rabbit and Steel is a recent game that came out which functions as a 2D bullet hell roguelite MMO raid simulator. Now that may sound like a hectic string of words, but trust me, the gameplay is much more hectic than that. Upon startup, you are introduced with 5 starting classes. Wizard Rabbit, Assassin Rabbit, Heavy Blade Rabbit, Dancer Rabbit, and Druid Rabbit. The classes can be categorized as two types, being melee and ranged. Both classes have their perks being that melee has to be close to the boss to do damage to the fullest, and range can choose a safe distance from the boss to keep consistent damage. Each class has their own subset of attacks and skills, being your primary, secondary, special, and defense. Every class will have their own different set of attacks that you'll be able to cycle through, and it'll help you do your top damage. Depending on your class, some may offer more support than others to your teammates. Throughout a playthrough, you'll be able to upgrade said attacks and skills, as well as items to help boost you. Within Rabbit and Steel, my main is the Heavy Blade Rabbit, because all I think is my favorite Ooga Booga class, because I do big damage and I don't have to think when I hit. Heavy Blade Rabbit's primary is just a big circle that hits prior to where you are, and your special is a gap closer that closes your distance by hopping right over to the enemy with a big slash. My favorite part about it is that when you get an upgrade, you can do more Ooga Booga damage, making you hit harder and harder. For example, I was able to do some big damage with this secondary upgrade right here, which supercharges all my attacks, and this special upgrade that grants me Flash, which is basically just another damage multiplier, and here I am doing top damage now. Yeah, you're getting nerfed, buddy. Uh, <laughs> no, no, totally, totally valid. I also had an earlier build where I did a lot of damage at the cost of a. Uh... Wait, over here, over here. I'm trying to move. I'm so goddamn slow. Oh, you are slow. I think, yeah, I think you bricked your build. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I don't think you can play anymore. No, I just need the damage. That's all I need. No, I think you bricked. Oh, I now you bricked me. <laughs> Once you choose your class, you can now begin the game. Now you can experience the best part of the game to test your gamer skills, which is to dodge and do big damage. If you're new to bullet hells or raiding, you gotta know your character's hitbox. And it ain't your entire character model, but this small little circle right over here. As long as this circle doesn't get hit, you are absolutely fine for dealing with projectiles. But that can only help you for so long, since there will be other mechanics that you'll have to pay attention to. Some mechanics may telegraph with certain visual cues like text above your head, visual identifiers of where you'll be moved, or even something like matching colors. There's a lot of mechanics in this game to learn from, but as long as you know which difficulty you're playing on, you'll slowly begin to adapt run after run as this is a roguelite after all. I'd highly recommend playing together with friends or other players as the best of it is experience with multiple people. You'll see how hectic the mechanics can be, and if you go down, other players just need to survive for you to be able to get back up. If your friends aren't available right now but you just need a party, you can visit the browse lobby section up in the top right and you can see the many people looking for parties right now. You may see some lobbies saying biz or hector strats and all that, but those are just some FF14 players just migrating over because they're starving for content in their own favorite game, Final Fantasy XIV Online. 
the hit MMO RPG. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> but yeah, pretty cool lobby search system, and you'll be able to text chat with others too. Though when I played a bit in a random lobby, no one really talked to each other and looked like people were just chilling to play the game or to give it a shot for the first time. Rip this random lobby wizard rabbit. I wish you the best in your future runs. If you ever want to voice chat with others, the devs also recommend checking out their official Discord to better coordinate and strategize with other players. There's tons of channels and if you really want to get into like harder content like in Lunar Difficulty, you can always create a party and party finder within the Mino Devs Discord. There's also a story mode if you decide to play solo offline where you get to piece together what is happening within this kingdom. I haven't quite gotten to the end of the story in terms of having it conclude, but I do know how you're able to see different area enemies interact with one another, creating a bit more charm to the world itself. You'll be able to see on the map different areas with a question mark bubble. This will help you figure out where to go next, and you'll see more dialogue between characters to further progress the story. Aside from that, if you ever want to just get to practice in before you play with friends, going solo is definitely has you covered. I do like even though that you clear the game once, there is still a lot that you can do in this game like collecting. If you go to extras from the menu and head over to collections, you'll be able to see unlockable sets and more classes on the left side and items that you haven't and have used from each set. I think it's a really cool way to keep raiding as well as to experiment with different items and classes. To further expand your collection, you can complete challenges shown on the side, or if you find challenges to be difficult, you can also just defeat a certain amount of bosses to unlock them. Quick thing I should also mention, if you're having trouble with any visuals or any sort of effects, I would highly recommend checking out the settings to help you customize the game to your preferences. Aside from that, if you really want to complete your collections and achievements, you gotta complete all the difficulties and that can be tough. And here you could see some of the first players to do so. As of May 10, MinoDev as well as the beta testers helped organize an event, or rather a race for a race to world first to clear the game on the hardest mode, Lunar Difficulty. The condition is that they must beat all five different area bosses, then complete a full clear run, which is just all in one go. The first group that was able to complete the race cleared within 2 hours and 20 minutes of the challenge even starting. As fast as the first clear was, it was a bit too fast, so the dev congratulated them as the first roguelite clear, where it was established as who would be able to clear the first as any class. Shortly after, a new race appeared for the first raid clear, where the first party to clear as all unique classes. The first clear for the first raid clear was cleared in 40 hours and 8 minutes. Seeing a game have a race to complete the hardest difficulty was really awesome to witness. And I'd also recommend checking out our contestants' runs to see, because I think they're cool. Smiley face. There's so much love to this game, and I think Mino Dev's idea on design show it so well. As it is clear, Mino's inspiration for mechanics and other designs were inspired after Final Fantasy XIV's raids and mechanics that can be seen within some of these fights. Especially Teleport. Oh dear, Teleport. But I think these design ideas from another game fit right into this game, creating some new and fun ideas for players to learn and adapt to against enemies. There's a lot of cool ideas that the dev may incorporate in the future, and I say this because one of their devlogs mentioned the addition of adding DLC in the future. Cough, cough. Add Alexander. Cough. <laughs> But aside from that, in terms of music, I think it's really cool how they added detail where in each area it would have two different types of songs, containing an out-of-combat song and an in-combat song that would transition very smoothly. My favorite, and I think a lot of other players' favorites, being the Emerald Lakeside theme, which has vocals sung by Kitsui Akira. And it's such a cute song to vibe to. My friends and I love this area so much, and within the past few weeks, I made a lot of great memories playing this game with them. So from me to you, I'd recommend giving it a shot with friends. And remember, prepare to steal yourself.
Thanks for watching till the very end. I really appreciate you sticking out and hearing me out on this awesome indie game. It's really fun seeing a community for a game grow, and I really want to see how crazy this game would turn out to be. Who knows? Just like Final Fantasy XIV, where we have a guy named Hector giving us diagrams on raid mechanics there, maybe we'll have someone for Rabbit and Steel to create guides as well. That'd be fun to see. But thank you again for watching and feel free to subscribe. I'll be covering more videos about video games, maybe leaning towards more indie games or perhaps games that focus more on communities in general. Not sure, still trying to find that niche that I'd like to stick with, but those are my plans. But if you have any games, feel free to recommend them to me. And aside from that, thank you very much.